Romans 11. By the way, it's happy birthday to Bonzi. Bonnie is eight years old today. If she's eight, think of you. Romans 11, I'm going to be talking to you. This is a real simple thing. Uh, I got thinking about it. I wasn't going to do it. I got to think about it. I want to talk to you about I am. Now, we usually refer to I am as the Lord, but I'm going to show you some I am's in the Bible about Paul. And you account them to yourself and get to thinking about them. Um, I, I listen to a lot of the teaching, and most teaching is based on physical activity of change or repentance and the ability of oneself which I hear that preaching all the time, that you'll do better and everything will get better and, you know, whatever. I guess I missed that boat because it ain't getting better. And, uh, we, we, you know, we can't even get com a computer over there to work. That We're in that hole right here. And they, it won't even hard to bring the computer energy in or whatever. So, you know, uh, maybe we should move into our golden mansion of, Forty million dollars or something these people do well here's Paul and Paul writes to the Romans and you understand the situation with the Romans the Romans are Jew, uh, uh, Gentiles that have been circumcised of their own accord and have become called a Jew and they rest in the law and Paul goes through a lot of things with them in this book but the emphasis in Romans 11 is, is, of course, always the elect according to grace. And the instance of verse 11, he said, I say then, have they stumbled, they should fall. Now, it wasn't God's purpose for Israel to fall. He let them fall. They took that upon themselves. And uh, nobody goes out in the world and tries to fall or tries to make a mess out of everything. But it comes. Things like that come upon them. Well, the Israelites here, he refers to the fact of the nation of Israel. They were chosen of God in the Old Testament to be the teacher of the world of what God expected. In other words, he laid everything out to them. You keep that, then you can go out and, and teach the world what I expect. But instead, they started acting like the world. And in acting like the world, they, they fell into an idolatrous state. And when they stumbled, he said in verse 11, I say then, have they stumbled, they should fall. God didn't make them fall. He let them fall. Just like he'll let you do whatever you want to do. He'll let you do it. But there's always a consequence or an answer to be paid for. He said, God forbid. So he didn't want them to fall. But during that fall period, he has something else in mind. Now, he had this in mind before the foundation of the world, <clears throat> and someone chosen to do this. Now, watch in verse 11. I say then, have they stumbled, they should fall, God forbid, but rather through their fall, salvation is coming to the Gentiles. You ever heard that on TV or radio? Uh, do they ever emphasize the fact that Israel's fall brought salvation to the Gentiles? Yet, it, is it, I mean, it's right there doctrinally written down. Verse 12, now if the fall of them, Romans 11, 12, now if the fall of them be the riches of the world and the diminishing of them the riches of the Gentiles, how much more their fullness. For I speak to you Gentiles, insomuch that I am the apostle of the Gentiles, not two. I'm the apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify my office. Paul emphasizes that <clears throat> with this fall of this nation, Another Gentile is chosen. I mean, uh, another apostle is chosen. The 12 apostles are for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. They will preach to all the house of Israel, but they are for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Here we got an apostle that was chosen, that being chosen, he's to who? Or of? Gentiles, okay? Well, in the verse, verse 13, for I speak to you Gentiles in so much as, here we go, I am the apostle of the Gentiles and magnify my office. Okay? Now, <clears throat> look in Galatians chapter 1. <clears throat> Verse 
verse 13. Paul said, For you have heard of my conversation in time past in the Jews' religion. All right? He was a conversationalist in the Jews' religion, uh, obviously being a Hebrew and a Pharisee. He said his conversation. So uh, every Sabbath day they would probably read in the, in the synagogues the law, uh, go to temple, go to uh, the feast days and all that, and his conversation was in the Jews' religion. And, and he emphasizes Jews' religion. He doesn't emphasize God's religion. You, you see what I'm saying? It's a Jews' religion. It's not something they had took on themselves. Folks, you got to understand the things they've had added through the years to what God said. They've added things to what God said that God never said. Uh, it's like Zola Levitt on TV used to be the teacher of the Jews trying to administer grace, and yet he would do the, the, the supper or the Passover meal and then he would pick up an egg off of the tray, and he said, I'm not sure where this egg came from on the tray. He said, I'm probably pretty sure it's the feast of, of, of fertility, God. Oh, well, and he put it back down. Like, it's okay. See, the Jews did what they did, and it, they, in their own mind, it was all right. I mean, the Lord hit them in Matthew 15 about it because... Even though they weren't honoring their father and mother, they could give a gift. And that would satisfy the, the need of not honoring father and mother, which is one of the commandments. Well, God gave them the commandments, and he gave them no satisfaction of changing it. He gave them satisfaction if, if they broke one, they go offer a sacrifice. And he gave the sacrifices they were supposed to offer and everything else. There ain't one Gentile in this town that knows the sacrifices for breaking the law. If you went and asked them, uh, do you believe the Ten Commandments are still in effect? Well, sure, they're, I mean, we should live by them. Then what do you do as sacrifice for breaking one? I mean, they're laid out in the Old Testament, Leviticus and Deuteronomy. He laid out what, the, what you offered for breaking the sacrifice. But that in all, you can't just go and offer a sacrifice on a regular basis as the Jews did. That's iniquity, Isaiah chapter 1. They were going and offering up sacrifices every week, even though they didn't think they were breaking a law. They were doing it religiously. And God said, the stench, he said, uh, who has required you to tread my course? And, and who uh, told you to offer up these animals and sacrifice? The sacrificial offerings were for breaking of the law. Well, Gentiles don't know that. But yet they claim that the Ten Commandments are good to live by. I don't know anybody living by them. Honestly, do you know anybody that actually lives by the Ten Commandments? No. They've always got the covetousness and the, uh, what's the one, uh, bearing false witness. There's nobody in here that hadn't spread a rumor at one time or another probably. Bearing false witness. Hey, did you hear so-and-so did this? And Facebook, Lord of mercy. I believe that is the bearing false witness of all the world. Oh, people laundry their dirty laundry on that thing. It's unbelievable what they put on there. A lot of people report where they're eating. Boy, if I was a crook, I'd get on there and go, hmm, eating in that restaurant, huh? Hello. And head for the house. I mean, I don't want nobody to know what, I mean, why do I want everybody to know what I'm doing? My goodness. Well, in Galatians, verse 13, Galatians 1, you have heard of my conversation time past in the Jews' religion, how that beyond measure I persecuted the church of God and wasted it. What does that tell you about the Jews' religion <coughs> versus the church of Jerusalem? They didn't believe in it. If Paul's part of the Jewish religion and he's persecuting the church, he must be an unbelief, right? And that's exactly what he said. Hold there, go First Timothy, chapter one. Some people come to Bible class. If they come more than once, they finally sit there and they go, "I didn't know that." They finally admit it. First Timothy, chapter one, verse thirteen. He says, "Who was before a blasphemer, a persecutor, and injurious?" Those are not good words, are they? 
Is that love? Okay. But I obtained mercy because I did it how? Did he think he was doing right? Philippians said if you'd asked him as Saul, he would have said it's touching the righteousness which is the law blameless. Persecuting the church. How can you persecute the church and think you're right? Blind. He was a blind Jew. And of course on the road to Damascus, the Lord showed it for three days. Here's a blind Jew. He blinded him. All right, now go back to Galatians and watch again. <clears throat> in verse 14, chapter 1. And profited in the Jews' religion. Then does Jew religion make money? Do Gentile religion make money? <laughs> Above many mine equals in my own nation, being more exceeding zealous of the traditions of my fathers. So it didn't start with Saul, it was way back. It was the father's tradition that he was following. Go to Philippians. In Philippians 3. The Catholic Church has been worried about the zeal of the church for many years now because of their dwindling uh, memberships. Because people are getting harder and harder and they're getting uh, more complicated in their things in life, you might say. And Paul said in verse uh, 4, Though I might also have confidence in flesh, if any man thinketh he have where he might trust in the flesh, I am more. If you would have talked to Saul, if you were a Jew, you obviously he wouldn't talk to you as a Gentile, but if a Jew would have talked to Saul, he would have had confidence, wouldn't he, in the flesh. Isn't it amazing that you go from this verse to 1 Corinthians 2, and he talks about that... Uh, he, he was with fear and trembling. Not this man right here. Not the, as he's talking about his old self, he wasn't afraid. And he wasn't afraid to converse and talk about his religion. Verse 5, circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of the Hebrews, touching the law of Pharisee, concerning zeal, persecuting the church. What's his zeal based on? And what do we know about the church? It's the right way. They believe that Jesus was the Son of God. If Paul, a Saul of Tarsus, would have believed that, he would have known they killed him. He didn't believe they killed the Lord of the Almighty. He believed they killed a false prophet. Now watch. Touching the righteous which is in the law, blameless. Blameless? Do you know anybody blameless? <laughs> Freddie uh, was telling me about one of the women that came to church or, or to the Bible study in Mount Ida the other night, and she said, I'm good enough. What would make her think that? Because she doesn't do the things she thinks you're doing. Fine. Does that make you good enough? There's something missing there, as far as I, I can tell. All right, now watch. Second Timothy chapter, uh, uh, I apologize, one more time, Galatians. Galatians chapter 1, now we'll go to Second Timothy. In Galatians chapter 1, Verse 14, profited in a Jew's religion above many of mine equals in mine own nation, being more exceeding zealous of the tradition of my father. But, thank God for the but. But, when it pleased God who separated me from my mother's womb, called me by his grace to reveal his son in me. Not religion. He's not going to reveal religion anymore. He's not going to reveal his background heritage that made him think he was a legend in his own mind. It said, but when it pleased God who separated me, verse 16, to reveal his son to me, that I might preach him among who? Boy, you're talking about a cut in the flesh. A full-blooded Jew who is a Hebrew now will go to the Gentiles, who are the heathen, who he doesn't like. You ever talk to anybody you didn't like and gave them the gospel? 
did you notice that you didn't like that person, but you gave them the gospel anyway, and you went away from there thinking, I hope I did it right, and you know, whatever. Paul was always concerned. I speak the truth in Christ and lie not. He was always concerned. Look in 1 Corinthians chapter 2. I hear people pray out loud, and they try to make great oratory speeches. And it's, it's almost like they're commanding God to do this. Oh, God, do this, do this, do this. I mean, they're telling God what to do. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 1, And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God, for I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified. Now, that doesn't take a big religion, and it doesn't take a big education to figure that one out. What was he going to uh, preach among them? Absolutely. Why? This is where we'll get to in just a minute. For I was with you in weakness and in fear much trembling. You know, Saul doesn't strike me as a man that in an oratory speech being afraid. Does he you? Anno uh, afraid in a speech? He doesn't strike me as being afraid in oratory speaks. What does he say here? I was with you in weakness and fear and much trembling. Let me ask you something. What a lot of times stop you from witnessing? You're afraid. You're afraid of the rejection. You're afraid of what it'll cost you, or you're afraid you can't say it right. Well, he's narrowed it down for you that you don't have to go to great, great lengths to teach. What does the verse say? The gospel of Christ. Turn to Romans 1. Here is, I am. In Romans uh, chapter 1, verse 14. I am what? To who? Well, what do you owe them? Well, he went down the loan shark, got some money. Why did God's son appear to him? And he, re he said, he, he separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace. And he said, I'm a debtor, both to the Greeks and the barbarians. Have you ever looked in your life and understand why God called you? There are certain people in your life you will reach. There are certain people that are going to come in contact with you that God can use you. You see... Pastors and teachers don't see as many people as you do. I see the same crowd come or go on Sunday and Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday and whatever and uh, may not see anybody because between studying or taking care of what I have to do in my life too, I'm not out in the workforce like you. Have you ever really embarrassed yourself in the Amongst friends. If, uh, if I was to come to a party of yours and start witnessing to them and they said, I never heard that before, and I asked if you had told them and they said no, would I think you were ashamed? You know what I'm saying? Your life is, is based on Galatians 2. And we'll go there in just a minute, but I'm going to finish reading it. And that, po well, that was posed a question to me one time. It says, if I follow you around, will the people you've been around know me, or will I have to tell them? You see what I'm saying? If I, and, and I'm just, let's say, if Jesus followed you today for the rest of the week, but he wouldn't reveal himself, would he have to reveal himself to those you know because you didn't? 
It's a, that poses a problem, doesn't it? Does that make you think about your life? I mean, it's just a, it's just a thought. It was posed to me years ago, many years ago, say, uh, when you go there, are you going to talk about the Lord or whatever? And people, sometimes I'm at a restaurant, I, I just begin to talk, and I don't do this all the time, but I begin to talk about them, and I sometimes I do the dollar or whatever. And I watch people around me how they're reacting. And some of them are kind of like, I wish you'd shut up. People around here are looking at us, you know. And it's like uh, when I did the uh, funeral of Mrs. Bearden's daughter. We were out in the parking lot, and the Mossy Back Deacon come up to me and did I hear you say that Jesus Christ went to hell? I said, yeah. But not only did I say it, let's read it. And so I opened my Bible right there in the parking lot, and he got, you know, you can see he's just getting kind of wormy. You know, he's like. <laughs> and I read it, and he said, well, I have to talk to my preacher about that. And I said, let's forget you, preacher. Let's read it again. And the second time I read it, you know what that character said? He said, my Lord didn't go to hell. I said, probably your Lord didn't. <laughs> but he had to go talk to his preacher to get it straight when it was being read to him. Folks, I can read things, I can show you things, but I can't straighten it out for you necessarily. It's already straight. It's right there. All, all you can do, you can take the Bible and check it out. If I make something up, fine. I'm an idiot. Most of them are. They're going on their own whims and will and whatever else. But if we read it, it's there. Watch. I'm a debtor both to the Greeks, so is this an I am? I am a debtor both to the Greeks. I am debtor, I apologize, not a. I am debtor both to the Greeks and to the barbarians, both to the wise and wise. So as much as in me is, I'm ready to preach the gospel to you that are Rome also. Are you a debtor to somebody? Yeah, you're a debtor to your neighbor, your friends, your relatives. You're a debtor. Why? Do you honestly expect them to get it in religion? You didn't get it in religion. So you're a debtor to them. The love of Christ constraineth us. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 14. Now watch here. Read again. For Verse 16. What we see again? I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also the Greek. Is it the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth? Then, according to what you read in Paul, you don't have to say anything save Christ and Him crucified, do you? You don't have to have that education. You do not. Have to, somebody said, Brother Jerry, you know more Bible than I do. That has no effect on the gospel of Christ. That is my vocation. Preaching and teaching, that's what God wanted me to do. That has no, no effect on the fact that is the gospel simple? You don't even have to memorize the gospel. Once you trust it, you'll know it. It'll come just right out. You'll know it flat out. Christ died for our sins according to Scripture, was buried, rose again the third day. Say, the day I got saved, I didn't know where it was at in the Bible. You don't have to know where it's at in the Bible the day you trust the Lord. You just have to know what he did for you and trust that. Because it's the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. Look in Ephesians chapter 2, uh, 1. I mean, all the time people say, I never do that, Brother Jerry. I never heard that before. Well, wow. How long have you been going to church and you never heard that? Wow. Ephesians 1, 12, that we should be the praise of his glory. Praise of his glory. I hear people saying, oh, we sing songs of praise. Well, what does this say? That we should be the praise of what? His glory. Who first trusted in Christ. How would you trust in Christ? Let's read on. In whom you also trust after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. In whom also after you believed you were what? Are you thankful? Well, dig in. Dig in and 
Make somebody else grateful. Just go to your work and do this and go back and see what else you can get into and set up your vacation, set up that, but nobody ever hears from you about what's really blessed. Because it might cost you. Philippians. Chapter 1. What was Paul I am not ashamed of? What did he magnify? His office. Both of them are going to be horrendous against him. Number one, the gospel, the God of this world don't want it out. And if our gospel be hid, it's hid to them or lost. In whom the God of this world is blind to the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ should shine unto them. One of the problems of people in grace is they get discouraged real quick. You ask one person, they kind of make fun of you or they don't want to do it. You ask another, pretty soon you say, well, they ain't going to do no good. I got it. Praise God. And just go on about your business. Again, you can do anything you want. You're allowed to do anything you want. But there is a day of reckoning about it. You know why I know? There is an answering for what you have done in the body. Colossians is very clear on that. Now watch, Philippians chapter 1, verse 29. For unto you is given in behalf of Christ not only to believe on him. Oh, my God, if I go to Ephesians, there was a time when I didn't have that right. I did not have the right to Christ, God, or any kind of worship that God would recognize. But it's given. Look at it. For unto you it's given. What? In the behalf of Christ. You know, Christ was crucified. He buried, rose. He went up to the Father and he's seated. He's not standing. He's seated. He called this man who was not ashamed of his office, nor was he ashamed of the gospel, and it preached it to people. Okay? The people were to keep the faith. And it's passed from faith to faith. That's what it says. Romans 17. Uh, 10. All right, uh, uh, Romans 10. Faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Say, well, Brother Jerry, that's strictly your job. I'm just here. Well, you can be here, but you can also tell your friend. <laughs> Somebody say, I just love my friend. I just don't want to make him upset. Die, baby, die. That's a terrible thought sometimes. Not only to believe on him, but also to what? Having the same conflict which you saw in me and now here to be in me. Okay? Well, look in uh, 2 Timothy chapter 1. Say, I don't like what you're talking about, Brother Jerry. I, want to, I came here to be made happy. Well, get happy. Be happy that it was given on your behalf to believe on him. Think of what you know versus what other people don't know. Think about that, folks. You know, it's one thing to be ignorant, but ignorance is not bliss. Once you learn something, you're held accountable for it. All right, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 12, 4. The which cause I also suffer these things. The next word is a kicker, isn't it? Never the less. That's telling me that Paul says, no matter, it don't matter. This is what happened. Right. Verse 11. Whereunto I am appointed a preacher, an apostle, teacher of the Gentiles. For the which cause? All right, if you magnify Paul as the apostle of the Gentiles, Romans 11, 13, what's going to start happening? If you absolutely stand for the fact that the gospel of Christ is the power of God unto salvation, what's going to happen? Okay, keep that in mind. Nevertheless, I am what? For I know. Now, that tells me that Paul knows 
because of that appointment, the persecution coming and will come and has been coming and shall come. Nevertheless, I'm not ashamed, for I know in whom I believed and persuaded that he's able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day. Right? Okay. Paul is not ashamed of it. Now look in Romans 8. In Romans 8. Folks, I guess somebody in here needs it. The rest of you may hate it, but I wrote this down in the last five minutes before you guys started coming in because it came to me. So somebody in here, just go ahead and pucker up. <laughs> Maybe it's me. Romans 8, verse 38, for what's the next two words? I am persuaded. Boy, he's got several verses on this persuasion. All right, for I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. How about that? In the persecution, can anything separate you? No. Okay. Look in Galatians chapter Four, uh, three. Verse 1, O foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you, that you should not obey the truth, before whose eyes Jesus Christ had been evidently set forth, crucified among you. All right, look in uh, chapter 5, verse 1. He tells the Galatians, stand fast, therefore, in the liberty. The liberty is one of the things that religion does not like. Uh, not being concerned on your living style is a detriment to religion. Oh, my God, they live in, them, them grace people live any way they want. I think grace people are pretty decent myself, but... We do have a tendency maybe to dance and drink a little bit more than the religious people in the open. <laughs> and not be ashamed of it. But religious people are dedicated. The problem with grace people is they are very nonchalant. can drive four hours to a Bible class and be four, maybe two or four people there when it was, and they're still there. They just don't have, just don't want to get up and get out of their chair. I, the, the always the issue is I know it. I know I'm saved. What, what difference does it make if I go? Edification. Either God gave me as a gift for your edification or he didn't. If George and them don't think and Harold and them, and, and people in here that drive, most of are driving very far. If you don't think I don't appreciate that, I do. For you to drive from Otago, Burnsville, uh, Montgomery. Think about what religious people would think about George and them driving when there's probably a church within a mile of your house or 300 yards. 300 yards. <laughs> they look at you, what, are you some kind of fool? If you don't think I don't appreciate that, though, I do. I mean, I'm not going to give you a huggy, slurpy kiss. But I do appreciate you being here. And I look forward to you walking through the door, and I meet you looking forward to you because you put out the effort to try to study God's Word. Well, he said, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty where Christ has made, made us free, and be not entangled again with a yoke of bondage. So there's a yoke of bondage available. And it's based on verse 8. Did Paul say he was persuaded correctly? Now watch this. This persuasion cometh not of him that called you. There's a persuasion out there that's the direct opposite of what Paul had. 
and it's to bust you or your reward. That's exactly what it's about. Now let's look at some things about Paul. In Romans 7, here's what Paul says he is, or I am. In Romans 7, verse 24, O wretched man, what? Now see, somebody says, you can't serve God that way. You got to get right with the Lord. Paul said, O wretched man that I was. Now he says, I am. Who should deliver me from the body of this death? What does he know is working against him? And the body, right? I thank God how? He can't talk to God without going through Christ. I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord you remember when Paul said he enabled me? It's through Christ. I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord, so then with the mind I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh the law of sin. Now how do I, can, how do I reconcile, how do I think about this, my mind? How, how many of you have got some things in your mind you wish weren't there? They come up in prayer? Yeah, do you swear that you'll never do that again or even think about that again? <laughs> right? Romans 12 is how you take care of some of that, but you're not going to ever take care of it. Okay, Romans 12, verse 1. Folks, where do you leave your Bible during the week? How many of you have read eight books this week? I'll be like Abram or Lot. How many of you have read three books in your Bible? <laughs> what is it, Clark? And to keep Lot from being destroyed over there. If there just be one righteous man. <laughs> How many of you have read one book this week? We got one person in here. Romans 12, 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable servant. Be not conformed to this world. Be ye transformed by what? Did you renew your mind this week? How'd you renew it? By TV. <laughs> you see, the more books you read, the more words you read, the more you renew. It comes in. And you will not understand this until some time comes when you need to witness or talk to somebody and it'll come out of you and you didn't know it was there because you put it in there. And God knows how to bring it out. Our mind, what do they say, we use about 10% of it. It has the capacity of this whole Bible with no problem at all. It has got gigabytes and what, what do you call that crap on the phone? Uh, all them things you can put all in memory. Do you realize how much your brain memorizes? Do you remember when you were a kid? Isn't it amazing what you can remember? And it, it doesn't seem to be clogged up. I mean, your ears had not fell off because your head swelled up. That brain is amazing creation of God Almighty. And it can fire off things and come out of you just like... Phew. Well, what if... Phew, come out instead of some of the other... Phew, it would help, wouldn't it? Transforming. Now watch. Transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is good, that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. It's a proof involved. It's a proof. Now what was wrong with Israel? What were they supposed to do so they could do it? They were supposed to keep the laws and memorize the law and then they could teach me. And Israel could teach the Gentile world what God expected. But instead, they memorized what the Gentiles were doing. 
And you can't show a Gentile what he ought to do for God if you're doing the same thing. Yeah, it make any sense to you, Frank? Guy came to Bible class one night drunk as a hoot owl. He said, I'll stand here at the door and welcome you, and I'll help you out, Brother Jerry. I said, get your butt home. Finally went home. I said, I'm not mad at you for your drinking. I'm mad at your thought that even in your drunken state, you can bring them on. Well, folks, there's liberty in all things in the Lord. And you can eat and drink whatever you want to do, but could you not think about what you're doing? And have a little responsibility about it? There was a man one time went to a Bible class, and the first thing he did is ask her for a glass of wine in her own house. She didn't ever ask him back. Why? She may not have known the truth at that time. Folks, I know that when you know the truth, it's okay, but there are people that come in here. I mean, what do you think I wear this stupid thing for? There are some people that expect certain things, and you don't build up the wall just boom like that. you got to let them listen for a while. Then you drop the hammer on them. No. <laughs> There's got to be some thought of responsibility, right? So you try your best not to put that stumbling block in front of them. But you know what? We all do. We all do it. Paul says in verse uh, 2, Be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed by renewing your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. What is God's will for your friends? What is God's will for your family? Do you like the Bible study? What do you tell your friends or your relatives or anything you have in a Bible study? What do you tell them? Oh, it'll be all right. We'll stay here and party. You see what I'm saying, folks? Do you really want them to hear the truth? Well, and if they come on Sunday and say, hey, we're going to Bible study. If you don't want to go, stay here. Put it in front of them and see what happens. Oh, no, that that make them mad. Of course it'll make them mad. That's what he just said to you. It's not only giving them half suffer for believe on him, but suffer for Christ's sake. Folks, there are things that people just don't, they just don't think about. And they say, oh, it'll be okay. Folks, tell me you're guaranteed tomorrow. How about getting home? Well, then live that way. I go down the road, and I'll tell Kathy on the phone, I say, well, I'm going down here. There probably won't be nobody come. But I try to get there. Whether they come or not, I did. Our responsibility is doing what we do, not what they didn't do. You see what I'm saying, folks? Paul said, I fought a good fight. I finished my course. I am now ready to be offered. I am. Are you with me so far? <coughs> Turn with me to Galatians chapter 2. Don't you hate it when I bring up a message like this? Brother Moore used to say, we go leave the Bible study. He said, boy, they're going to hate me, ain't they? I said, I like you. He said, that don't matter. No. Galatians 2, verse 20. What's the first two words? I am crucified with Christ. Now, if you're dead, according to Romans 6, you're freed from sin. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, again, 
nevertheless, I live. Even though God did this, he let me be born and live. Yet not I. He doesn't see me. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. You are a walking, living Christ. Your life is His. He's the head, you're His body. The life which I now live, how? I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Now the Galatians had law people come in on them. And he said, I do not frustrate the grace of God. For if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. That's what he was talking to them about. The liberty standing in it, the foolishness, the persuasion that came upon them. We get convinced of certain things that the persuasion is not of God. And it might cause somebody else to fall. So we have to renew. We have to look so that we can prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God to them. Now watch Colossians chapter 1. Maybe it's me I'm preaching to. That's what it is. You're all free. Colossians chapter 1, the end of verse 23, but was starting the first, if you continue where? How? Now, how do you get grounded and settled? Reading and studying, and the gifts given to you, bringing it to your knowledge, where you meditate and think on these things. Now, watch. The end of the verse, if you continue in the faith, ground to settle, be not moved away from the hope of the gospel which you have heard and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven, whereof I, Paul, am made a minister. Was Paul a minister? I am. Okay? Verse 24. Who now rejoice in what? Most of the time when we suffer, we either get angry or sad. And we're like Charlie Brown. Why is everybody always picking on me? <laughs> but the Apostle Paul had done said, I am a debtor. I am debtor. He done said, I'm crucified, but I live. And now he says, who now rejoice in my sufferings for you. Nine times out of ten, if you have two people and you may be witnessing to one thinking you're doing a hot shot job with that one, the other one's listening. I was witnessing to two people one time in Darlington, and Robin was the only other, on the other side of the wall. I didn't even know she was listening. And the Lord was dealing with her. Uh, Harold was confused when Brother Moore dealt with Paige, and he didn't know it. You never know how the Lord does it. It ain't none of your business. Because we're doing such a hot shot bragging job on that individual. Oh, we're nailing them. And they ain't even getting it. While the Lord's dealing with that person over there. Isn't that amazing how he can do whatever he wants? He said, Who now rejoice in my suffering for you and fill up that which is behind to the affliction of Christ in my flesh? For who? Okay. Uh, Miss Gaines fell and fractured several bones, wasn't it? Hip bones. And right. Do you know what the rest of her body is feeling? Part of the body suffers. All of it suffers. Somebody said, I wish the rapture was a day. Well, what are you going to do about it? Well, I'm going to watch TV. <laughs> I'm going on vacation. If 
you really wanted to rap, you'd be out there hustling, wouldn't you? We're not hustlers. <laughs> Could be. You know, what's the old saying? Walk the walk, or talk the talk, and walk the walk. This is uh, one of the few churches around that actually believe that they're forgiven without any problems about it and can show it. Do the people that you know know what you believe? I did a man's funeral one time, a biker funeral. And it was a strange thing, but I said, you know, I'm going to tell what Eddie believed. Because I knew when Eddie got saved, and I knew what he believed. And I didn't know whether Eddie had ever told his biker buddy, buddies. But I knew. So I got in front, and we had a full room of full-dress colors. Cleveland Chapel. And the casket is beer cans and necklaces and piled all over him. <laughs> Full ones, not empty. Well, he's got to have something to go out on. That's the way they talk. And I preached what Eddie believed in the Lord. And when it was done, I actually had people shake my hand. And they told me, he said, I didn't know that Eddie believed that. And that's not a good testimony for Eddie. Somebody said, you go to Daytona Bike Week? Yep. But I talked to people about the Lord. One guy in, in the burnout pit in the, in the Iron Horse, which is probably a, as pit of hell as anything else witnessing to him up on the top rail on top of the burnout pit in the iron horse looking at him walking around and that wasn't too bad <laughs> and I witnessed to him about the Lord and he said I never thought anybody would talk to me up here on this about this I said why the Lord's here in me and I, I think he's thought about that I mean I, I hey Lord I'm going in the iron horse Stay there. I, I, I don't want you to go in with me. Okay? Just, and, and don't listen. And, and don't look at what I look at. <laughs> the Lord goes with you everywhere, folks. You're the temple. He dwells in you, walks with you. Uh, the old things about when you thought you were walking alone, you looked over there and somebody was holding up his hand. I don't know about that. He ain't walking beside me. He's walking with me. He's in me. And am I good at it? No. So I'm preaching to me. You can take it however you want. Paul said, who now rejoice in my sufferings for you. Who is he suffering for? Take it. Do not take it out of context. Who is he suffering for in verse 24? Who's the book written to? Who are they? Heathen Gentiles that Paul didn't like. Pick your worst enemy around you that you just really don't like and go witness to them this week. See what happens. Just one. Well, uh, they probably shoot me. Boy, what a way to die. Take the worst person that you know in your life and witness. Brother Jerry, you're getting personal. No. He didn't like the Colossians folks. He didn't like the Greeks. He didn't like the barbarians. Why? As touching the right of law, a Pharisee, a Hebrew, a Benjamite, whose God was the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, is now also the God. Romans 3, turn with me. Romans 3. I've shut up Romans 3 very clearly. Paul makes a statement about this. In Romans chapter 3. Verse 
Real quick, we'll look at several verses here. Romans 3, verse 28. Therefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Is he the God of the Jews only? Is he not also the Gentiles? Get a rock! Hit that guy! Yes, of the Gentiles also. Seeing as one God, we shall justify the circumcision by faith and the uncircumcision through faith. Amen. Turn with me to Philippians chapter 1. Yes, Paul wanted the rapture to come. Yes, he thought it might come in 1 Thessalonians, we which are alive and remain. But it didn't come. And the whole time he was waiting for it, here's what he said in Philippians 1.23. For I am in a strait betwixt two, having a desire to part and to be with Christ, which is far better. Nevertheless, to abide in the flesh is more needful for who? You. Turn with me to Romans, uh, Ephesians 6. Verse 20, for which, next two words, I am an ambassador in bonds, that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. Ephesians 3, verse 1. For this cause I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ, for you lousy Gentiles. <laughs> no. No. For you Gentiles, his worst enemies, his very worst enemies, Paul was a prisoner for him. And he was an ambassador for it. Now look in Galatians chapter 4, and what's amazing, I said this to a man one time riding in a car, and it wasn't long after that he got saved, it really bothered him, because we'd been spending some time in cars driving. Of course, been witness to him right and left. Been come to the Bible class. First time he ever came to Bible class, he walked in with his wife. And when they left there, he told me later on, he said, they left and he said, boy, old Paul preached in there, ain't he? He said, I thought I knew something. He said, all I knew is John 3, 16. He said, he didn't bring that up. <laughs> they kept coming. Well, and they was riding along there. And I uh, quoted 16, Galatians 4. What does it say? Am I therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth? Did you know that he had said, I'm afraid of you? And that's what I told him. I said, I, I'm become afraid of you. go to a new class you have to start all over from the beginning again say man that'd have to get boring not when you see people get it and understand it is a trying job to start all over and begin teaching just simple things and bring it on again but the people that have heard it over and over again get it they, it's like they get energized but the people that have never heard it start seeing things if you really want people to see Get some people here. Say, I can't get them. Now you're defeated. Now I can't get them to come. Who? The whole world? You're defeated when you say, I can't. Do you really want them to come? Oh, I'm, I'm a little bit ashamed, Brother Jerry. People call me up and say, Brother Jerry, can you go lightly? Lightly? <laughs> Don't think so. Second Timothy 4, I'll shut up. <laughs> I didn't know I was going heavily. Second Timothy. He used to make Brother Morse mad. People would call him. I said, Brother Morse, we got some people coming. Could you just shut it down, Paul? I never realized that until it started happening to me. And I go, ease off. 
You're bringing somebody in probably doesn't know the gospel of Christ. Good chance of it. Now watch, 2 Timothy 4, verse 6. For I am now. Something now there. Well, what is the now, Paul? Watch. I have fought a good fight. I have what? If you'll look in Paul's writings, you'll see where he finished his course. It's the Colossians. He never saw them face to face. Wrote them a letter. Also went to Laodicea. And he showed. Total down of any ordinances in Colossians. Freedom totally to all human beings everywhere with no judgment. I have finished my course. I have what? I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there's laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, should give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also the love is appearing, having to do with the teachers. Talk about the epistles. Timothy. My prayer has always been to God, no matter what I am. And I am least, just like Paul said in 1 Corinthians 15, least of all apostles, I am least of all teachers, is that I keep the faith. What is the faith? Christ died for our sins, according to Scripture. He was buried, and he rose again the third day, according to Scripture. If you trust that, God will see to you. Amen? Appreciate you being here.